What is MOI? MOI is an in infrastructure for digitally interacting humans. I think the last for about uh, two hours, we've had great talk about how technology helps the society. So I think uh, humans are part of the society. So we'll get started from there. So this is a statement which every one of you will agree, right? In today's world, networks are becoming all powerful. So we talked about Filecoin, we talked about Bitcoin, IPFS, having accessibility to infrastructure and network has grown leaps and bounds. And that's tremendous, great progress in the last 15 years. But what has it done? How has it impacted us? So technology is today embedded in our everyday lives. We eat through technology. Half of us will go hungry if Zomatos stops working. We won't be able to come here if Uber doesn't function. But that was not the case of technology 15, 20 years back. We were printing pay slips, we were sending emails, so we could live without them. Now we can't live with them, without them. So what does it all mean? All of your everyday human interactions are being replaced by digital interactions. Today, we operate our lives through technology, right? Our uh, reality itself depends upon uh, technology, and that creates some fundamental challenges and opportunities for us. So what is the impact of this shift? So let's understand what is the foundational impact of the shift. Uh, today's web no longer just connects static information. It just doesn't transfer static information. We are fundamentally starting to transfer value through real life digital interaction. A set of coconut vendors in Bangalore can connect and provide service. A bunch of independent cooks can uh, come together and provide uh, food. Uh, all of this is really happening in a real way. So what are digital interactions? So let's take that a little bit more. It's a peer-to-peer -peer exchange of value between participants on a global network based on the context of their interaction. So what is this word context? I think uh, there was a mention in the earlier talk about an uh, intelligent agent. So. What, what is an interaction? Interaction could be transfer of money from Bank of America to State Bank of India. It could be transfer of NFTs from one person to another person. These are interactions which technology supports. But it could also be hiring a cab, in hailing a cab in New York City. It could also be delivering food in some village. So your interactions are real life and getting more and more close to how you live your life. So the context of these interactions are completely different. The way you process and payment transfer from New York to Bangalore is completely different than how you would process an interaction with, uh, which when you hail a cab. And so this fundamental difference in context needs to be taken into consideration because your life and value depends on it now. So how is the digital interaction today supported in Web2 era, right? So the age of information, let's take a quick 10-second uh, dip at this. So you have an app server, all the interactions, assume it's a cab hailing app server, they go to an app server, and all the controls, your business logic, your trust management, and value and assets happen through the app server, right? So your entire life depends on the app server. If the Zomato servers go down, you don't get food. So that's the situation of Web2. 
So it's private app servers and app control information transfer. What, what happens in Web3? In Web3, now app servers are replaced by app chains, right? So you have many layers, many chains, and you need to interoperate between these chains. So there is some semblance of value transfers, but they're not decentralized wall gardens. You need to have uh, uh, connectivity, bridges, millions of bridges, zillions of app chains. All of them need to work together to drive this kind of capability. So the current state of web, as it stands today, does not provide the appropriate level of controls to support real life interactions. So MOI, the project that we are building on, is trying to deliver a solution which scales and supports a digitally interacting world where you can have uh, millions of transactions across millions of nodes in a flat network. Let's see how it is done. So what is MOI? A MOI is a participant-centric, context-aware, ISM-based value transfer network built using IFPCB for a stateful internet. Lot of words here. I'll try to unpack this in the next five minutes or so. First is participant. So today, does participant is participant a foundational dimension of computation? So if you're doing a peer-to-peer -peer value transfer, it's happening between two human beings. So today's definition of intelligence is built on a 90-year-old idea, which are called Turing machines, where participant doesn't have an input at all. So it's based on a model where participant doesn't have a seat at the table of computation. It talks about where you can process the data, what is the input to the data, and how it is transformed, and who processes the data doesn't have an say at all. So participant needs to be a foundational dimension of computation if you are going to have real life digital interactions come to light. And now, once you have participants, how do you define participants? Participants is uh, defined through something called context. Context is a representation of the participant. Today's computers have this idea called an identity. Identity is like your name. It's, uh, you got different names, your uh, uh, mother calls you by a name, your father calls you by a name. So you got different names, but context is like you. No, now once you bring context, which is your understanding of the computer into computation, then you are going able to enable it in a very intelligent fashion. Then the third point is value. Today, all transfers are happening at an information level. Information is like your balance. State is the balance attached to an individual at a programming level, but value is as part of a peer-to-peer -peer value transfer or a human-to-human -human value transfer, how do you manage and control that state becomes value, right? What is valuable to one person may not be valuable to be the second person. So if you're going to make technology control our lives, it has to get to a point where value transfers are fundamentally participant-centric. Once you have that, you have a state machine. Today, state machines work on in information. You need to have a state machine which works on value. So interaction state machine is a new state machine that we have built, which works on peer-to-peer -peer and human-to-human -human value transfer, which fundamentally addresses that uh, uh, problem of doing state machine for values. And finally, once you have a state machine which does peer-to-peer -peer value transfer, we have built something called IFPCP, Interaction Finality Protocol or Context Protocol. State management is all about agreement. So what IFPCP does is it allows you to do state management independent of the app so that all apps can work on the same network without worrying about state management. State management moves from an app level fundamentally and network level. So like HTTP push the information internet, IFPCP will push the value internet. So this is what we are trying to build a stateful internet on which MOI is built. Foundationally, we have something called a contextual compute machine, which brings participant fundamentally into computation. On top of that, we have a state machine replication, which works at a human to human level. And then we have an IFPCP capability on top of that, which decouples the state management from the application to the network layers. So 
applications can scale infinitesimally while networks can also scale to many number of nodes. You no longer need shards, you no longer need rollups, you no longer need layers. It's one internet on which you will be able to do value transfers. So obviously Mo is the first application or a blockchain built on top of this IFPC peer stateful paradigm. Obviously you can build other things, metaverse networks, peer-to-peer -peer database networks. So all the state management is managed by IFPCP, so applications can just scale very easily. So Mo is built for the network world, whereas today's blockchains are siloed, as I told you, they create the application chains and interoperability is a difficult problem. Where Mo is built for the network world, where interactions are driven by participants, it's completely participant-centric. It is a, uh, uh, so you control your, your destiny. For example, how you pr process and pay for a coffee transaction in your life is very different than how you will process and pay for a house purchase in Beverly Hills. Today's computing models treat both of them the same way. With Moi, you can modulate the execution of that based on what your preferences are. So fundamentally contextual computation, which Mo is built on, allows you to get the dynamic participant preferences as part of an interaction without losing the gender purpose capability of computation. So this is the fundamental aha that we have created. So what are the engineering pillars? Like 30 seconds. So we have built four fundamental pillars of engineering. We have built a new hyperscalable data structure. We have a completely new uh, consensus mechanism. We have a new execution environment. And we have also built a completely new language called CocoLang, which is fundamentally built for parallel computing and contextual computing. So how, how does this now look, the world the, in this new the digital interaction moi? Now you can see it's built on a stateful internet. It's a peer-to-peer participant, human-to-human participant control value exchange. So you don't have silos of uh, chains. Everybody works on one flat chain and values are held by the participants. Business logic are held by the applications and trust is managed by the network. So different parties individually do what they have to do so that you can reach hyperscalability. So today, I leave, leave you with this today, you're only a part of the sovereign. With ISM and MOI, you are the sovereign. What it means is you are able to control the peer-to-peer uh, uh, interactions the way you want. So come join this revolution. This is all about building a new contextual compute framework, fundamentally altering computation so participants can be fundamentally be part of that. You can go create your own uh, participant ID. You, will, you can interact on Babylon testnet. You can do your interactions and uh, interactions are different from programs. And uh, there are a couple of workshops you can join as, at those workshops as well. The digital world is evolving and we need to evolve with it. It is moving away from the app and cryptocurrency focus of the past. We're seeing a shift towards a more interactive peer-to-peer -peer model that's focused on people, assets, and values. But our current blockchain systems are app-centric, creating islands of capabilities with many heterogeneous blockchain networks. This will lead to an inflexible model with millions of bridges and billions of apps, creating an insecure and unsustainable end state. But won't there be independent apps for each unique need and situation? Won't people just have their values created and managed in independent apps and blockchains? Exactly. And that's the problem. With every type of digital asset or token needing its own app and blockchain, we're going to end up with an unmanageable mess. All these values belong to the same individual, and their true utility lies in a composite view of them. But in the current Web3 model, that's infeasible. So what's the solution? What's needed is a true participant-centric model of value creation and management. We need to move away from data structures and consensus mechanisms that are system-focused and instead create a model that's focused on the participant. That's where Moy comes in. We're using a context-aware computing model that's specifically built for the digitally interacting world. Moy is the first blockchain that's built around participants, not apps. 
we've created a participant-centric consensus, an asset-relevant data structure, and an interaction-specific execution model. All of this is designed to deliver a simple, scalable, secure, and sustainable end state. But how is Moi different from what's already out there? Today's blockchains support multi-purpose capabilities centered around apps. But what we need is general purpose capabilities centered around participants. That's the white space we're targeting. Moe is the first blockchain that focuses on the participants' values and assets, not just the app they're using. So this is a step change transformation. Exactly. We're not just engineering a better mousetrap for state management efficiency. We're transforming the entire approach to value management. Moe is built for the network world, where value and states are network attributes, whereas today's blockchains are built for a siloed world, where values and states are node attributes. So you're saying Moe is the future of blockchain? I'm saying Moe is the future of distributed systems. Using that contextual compute model, it's the first peer-to-peer -peer technology that's truly designed around participants, not apps. Moi enables a simple, scalable, secure, and sustainable end state that's focused on people and their assets. This sounds like a game changer. It is. Moi is the future of blockchain, and we're excited to be at the forefront of this revolutionary technology.